Last year, we ranked the top four lightweight commuter e-bikes on the market. It's now 2024. Is there anything better? Is there anything different? Can anything knock the specialized Vardo SL off the top spot? Stay tuned. Hi folks, I'm Jason and welcome to eBike Center. So, what classifies as a lightweight commuter e-bike? Well, for us, it has to be 20 kilos or lighter. It also has to have light kickstand, pannier racks and mud guards. This year, we're gonna rank the bike slightly differently. So we're gonna do it based upon the attributes as opposed to just one, two, three, four or five. First up, we've got the best value lightweight e-commuter bike. In this case, we've got the Voyeur behind me, E Plus from Momentum. They are part of the giant group, which is obviously one of the biggest producing bike producers, manufacturers in the world. I get the word, my words right there. And Momentum is their sort of entry level leisure brand. So it is a very good bike, very good and very well built bike, um, but it comes in a much lower price point. In this case, it's got a 25 newton meter sync drive hub motor on the back. It's got a 250 watt hour Panasonic battery and it weighs 18 kilos. The standard bike, is 1699 but you will have to pay for the mud guards pannier racks lights etc to go with it so you're looking probably to add another 150 200 pounds to that bike price to get it up to the spec that it needs to be to be classified for us as a commuter e-bike it's very simple it's a belt drive single speed so very very low maintenance very very easy to use it's great fun it's really easy and zippy to nip around on it is only 25 newton meters so bear that in mind if you live in a particularly hilly city it may not be the bike for you but if you live on something that's pretty flat or, or loose let's say gently undulating um, terrain then it's got plenty of power for what most people need it means that you can get to work without being all sweaty and horrible or it means it's just it's just a lot of fun having ridden it myself it is just a bike you jump on point and shoot and just go go for it it's got auto modes it's just got everything you need so if you're looking low price point and simple low maintenance it could be for me it could be voyeur <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got the lightest low-step commuter e-bike. In this case, it is the Trek Verve E Plus One Low Step LT. Quite a mouthful. Anyway, um, <laughs> right, so what's good about the bike, apart from its incredibly long name, it's got a 40 newton meter hyena motor, which is very, very punchy. A significantly more powerful motor than that which is on the Momentum. It's got a 250 watt hour in-frame battery, again, non-removable battery. We've got eight-speed gearing, and the, the big selling point of this one is it's got a full low-step frame. So if you're commuting with a bag on the back, or if you don't, for mobility reasons, don't want to throw your leg over the back of the bike, this is a very, very good option for you. It's so much easier to get on and off, and um, if you're, let's say, stop start in traffic, again, another really good option to have a low step bike. Plus, it's fully integrated with lights, mud guards, pannier racks, etc. unlike the Momentum, which you have to pay for separately. It's a very stable, very easy to use bike. It weighs 18.9 kilos and it's priced at £2,150. So it's not the most expensive bike. It's obviously not cheap, but it's still, it's a good value bike overall. It's a Trek as well. So you know that you're gonna get a lifetime frame warranty. You also get very good network support if you have any problems with the bike across the country, across that whole dealer network. So overall, a very good option. So the Verve, is it a bittersweet? Symphony, that's life. Next up, we've got the lightest bike in the world. In the world. <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Next up, we've got the lightest bike with a removable battery. In this case, it's the Kalkoff Endeavour Lite, which is a much simpler name if everyone else wants to take note of that. So in this case, they do two different models of the Lite. They do the Excite and they do the Move. In this case, we can't tell you about the Move because it comes in at 21 kilos and costs £3,299. But if you want to spend a bit more to save a kilo, we can talk about the Endeavour Excite. So this bike comes in with a Bosch SX motor. So it's a brand new motor from Bosch. It's 55 newton meters. It's extremely light. In addition, it's got a 400 watt hour battery located in the frame. But in this case, it is removable, which is the only bike on this video that has a removable battery. So if you're in a position where you need to take the battery out to charge it, this well could be the bike for you. It's also, as with all bikes from Kalkoff, it's a premium bike. It's really, really well built, which is part of the reason why it's pushing to 20 kilos versus some of the others, because it is really well put together. The aluminium is a bit thicker because it's designed to properly last. It's a really good product. In addition, with most Kalkoff bikes, they're not super sporty bikes. This is a trekking bike, but it's also designed to be very comfortable. It's got slightly more relaxed riding position. The handlebars curve around ever so slightly 
So if you're looking for a bike that is more comfortable, gives you a slightly more upright back in terms of the riding position, this one well could be the bike for you. So it's a particularly well spec bike as well. We're talking Shimano group set across the board, except for obviously the brakes, which are um, Magura MT30s from memory. Um, it's got, as I said, it's got all integrated lights, mudguards, kickstand, as you would expect, but it's good, it's really good high quality stuff. This bike also comes in a low step frame. So they do a crossbar version and a low step frame, which none of the other bikes on this, on this group test do. So that's a very good option. So it covers both bases. As I said before, it's just generally a very well put together bike. And if this one is for you, you should endeavor to go and find one. So next up, we've got an honorable mention, let's say, because this bike hasn't quite let's say one a category of its own accord, but it, it's so good in all of the categories um, that we're gonna give it an honorable mention anyway, and that is the Merida E-Speeder 400 EQ. It's a really good looking bike to start with. I know aesthetics aren't everything, but come on, we all love a good looking bike. It doesn't really look very dissimilar to a normal bike. If you were to see it on the road and it went past you, you'd think, well, that's just a normal bike. 17, 18 kilos. It's got the Marla X35 Plus motor in there. It's 40 Newton meters, 250 watt hour battery. It's well spec. It's a particularly good handling bike as well. So we thought we'd, we'd bring it in there. Had it had the new Marla X20 motor in there, then I think perhaps it would have won a category. But we thought we'd bring it in there. It's 2,850 pounds. Fantastic looking bike, a really good riding bike. So if you like your Maridas with lots of e-speeders, this is the e-speeder for you. <laughs> so finally, we have got the best bike overall, and it comes as no surprise, it is still the Specialized Vardo SL. It really just has everything. It's the lightest of the bunch. It's got nearly the most powerful battery, so it's got a 320 watt hour battery. The only bike on this list that has a bigger battery is the Endeavour from Kalkoff, which has a 400 battery, but it also has an optional range extender of 160 watts hours. Get that in there. A 35 Newton meter mid drive motor as well. So, again, like the Endeavour, it's the only one with a mid drive motor, so it is a much more natural feel to the bike. So, it's a far, far, certainly in my, in my opinion, a far better riding bike than any of the hub drive motors. The Endeavour is going to be a, is a fantastic riding bike because of that Bosch motor. But in terms of overall handling, if you're looking for something that's a bit more sprightly, the SL definitely has it over the Endeavour. It is, it's far more nimble. If you've ever ridden a specialized Cirrus, it's basically a Cirrus with a motor. Fully equipped, it still comes in around 16 kilos, which is really very light indeed. The bike itself is, is again, I shouldn't always go on about aesthetics, but it's a big part of why we ride bike, why we like bikes. It's a really good looking bike. In terms of range, you'll be talking, uh, they say up to 80 miles, that's probably a little bit generous. Particularly if you've got any hills in there, you're not gonna get 80 miles. But add on that range extender and you, you are looking in 80, maybe, maybe more miles of mixed terrain riding in there. Anything else to mention particularly on that bike, apart from the fact that it is just such a good all-rounder, is that it's currently hugely discounted. So where in the past we said the, the, the Specialized was the best bike, but it comes at a cost. Now it doesn't, they're currently retailing at two and a half thousand pounds, which is really good value for that bike. It's so much bike for the money. So if you're looking for one bike only, it still has to be the Vardo Specialized, no, the Specialized Vardo SL, get it the right way around. So the big question is, do you Vardo or do you Vardon't? So finally, what did you think about the bikes in this video? Is there anything in here that we've missed? Is there a bike you think perhaps we should, we should have included in this list or What's your favorite bike? We'd love your comments below. If you have any questions about any of these bikes, we'd love you to drop in store or send us a message, a text, an email, whatever it might be, because we have most of these bikes available to touch and test ride and to discuss with our lovely guys in store. So if you haven't liked or subscribed, we're very grateful. And finally, if we don't see you in store, we will see you in the next video. Cheers. This year, we're doing it slightly differently. We're going to rank the four bikes. Well, I stuttered. Yeah. yeah. Could you uh, move to your smidge like a, a tiny bit? Which one? To, to the right, sorry. To move to right. my smidge. <laughs> there we go. There Can we go. I move to my smidge? Move to my smidge just a little bit. There we go. Cool.